Hello and welcome to Finding God's Way. I wanted to share a lesson with you today about works. Uh, there are a lot of people out in the world that are saying uh, we can't do anything, we shouldn't do anything, and we're not saved by works, all these uh, different things that they're trying to say. But something is very important that we need to understand is that God created us to do works. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Are you listening? We are created unto good works. In other words, to do good things, to do good works. <clears throat> which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Live in them, to walk in them in the King James, that means to live in them, to do them. So we are created in Christ to do good works. Not hard to understand that, is it? Well, we even have more than that. Let's look, for instance, at Titus chapter 3. Turn with me to Titus chapter 3 and uh, verse 8. Start with verse 8. Titus chapter 3 and verse 8. And I'll read along with you. It says, This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. Are you listening? Maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. We're supposed to be doing good works. What are good works? Work, good works are those things that God has told us we need to do. Not hard to understand that. And when I say told us to do, I'm not referring to uh, obedience to the gospel or that sort of thing. I'm talking about good works, doing good things. We ought to do good unto all men, beginning at the household of faith. We're to take care of the widows and the orphans. We're to feed those and clothe those that are hungry. Those are good works, as an example. Okay? Doing good things. That's what we're supposed to do. We're to demonstrate that to the world. Now, how, what are some of these works? What are some of these things that uh, have been talked about? What kinds of works does the Bible discuss? Well, there, are, it, there is a kind of work that deals with the law of Moses. Look with me, if you will, at Romans chapter 3 and verse 28. Romans chapter 3 and verse 28. It says, Therefore we conclude... That man, uh, a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law, but without doing the things of the law. Now, what is, as you study the book of Romans, you find that Paul is writing this, of course, to the Roman church, but he's trying to help them clear up confusion dealing with the old law, as there were some, most of those were Jews that had been converted to Christianity. There were a few Gentiles, but a lot of them were Jews, and they were having difficulty letting go of the old law. They felt that it was something necessary that they needed to do, and they needed to maintain it. They needed to believe in Christ, yes, but they, well, we need to do the law as well. So he was trying to help them to learn and to understand that you can rele be released from that old law and let it go. And he even goes into great detail comparing marriage and how you could be... Uh, uh, separated from your wife, and you know, as death, and then you would be free to marry another. Well, that's what happened here with the old law and the new law. The old law was put to death, nailed to the cross, Colossians 2.14, when Christ died on the cross. He brought an end to the old law and brought forth the new law, which is the new covenant that we live under today. That's another lesson, but that's what he's talking about here. They were having difficulty with doing the deeds of the law. 
As a matter of fact, we're told no man can keep the law. The only one who did was Christ. Nobody else was able to keep it and do it correctly. And that's why he's saying here a man, that a man is justified by faith. Why? Because I obey that faith. Not only do I believe in Jesus Christ, but I follow through with God, what God has told me to do, which includes the plan of salvation, which then turns into my salvation, my being saved, my being justified, brought back into a right relationship with God. Look with me, if you will, uh, at... Uh, Galatians 2 and verse 18. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 18. It says, For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. He's talking about going back to the old law. We're justified by faith. Okay? And we're told in Ephesians chapter 4, there's only one faith. There's only one process, one means of worshiping God, believing in God, and serving God. And that is the only one we can follow and be justified. They, again, were having difficulty with releasing themselves of the old law. And it was causing problems. Okay? There's works of merit. Works of merit. Things I do to earn Okay, merit would be earning something. Things I can do that might earn something. Look with me at Romans chapter 11. Let's go back to the book of Romans. And chapter 11 and verse 6. Romans 11 and verse 6 says, And if by grace, then is it no more of works? Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Okay, so he's saying there's a difference. You can't earn your way to heaven. You can't work, do works of merit and expect to gain your salvation. There's no price we can pay. It's beyond our ability to pay the price necessary. There's no way we could physically do that. And if we try to earn our way, then God's grace means nothing. And that's what Paul's trying to get them to understand here. You can't keep the old law. You can't follow through the old law and try to earn your way. If that's the case, then God's grace is meaningless. Okay? And that's why he's trying to get them to understand. So I can't go to heaven by works of merit. I can't earn my way. Uh, will I be rewarded by my works? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, we're told that our works do follow us. And God's going to look at our works and what have we done? How, what have we done to serve him? What kind of good works have we done? They will follow us. But they don't earn our salvation. It's not. That's not the way it is. And of course, uh, we have already read Ephesians 2 and verse 8. Okay? Uh, let's go ahead and look at that again. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. I'm pretty sure I read that a while ago. It says, for, gra for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Now here's where a lot of people have a problem. They want to leave that and say, well, there you go. See, I don't have to do anything. That's not what God has said. I read for you a while ago that we are to do good works. Now, and that was uh, at verse 10, just two down below from this. Let's read all three of these together and let's look, see how it works. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, bragging rights. In other words, look what I have done. I've done more than you. No. No, that's not the way it should be. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So he's not saying you don't work at all. He's saying your works are preordained by God that you should walk in them, but they are not what saves you. Christ died for you that you might have forgiveness of sins. That's the grace of God. 
Now we have to do what? We have to obey the gospel to receive that salvation. And we must do what? Continue in the faith. And then continuing in that faith involves doing good works. Not hard to understand that. Not hard at all. Let's look at works of our own righteousness. Look at Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, Not thy works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Again, how hard is that to understand? It's not by works of righteousness. I didn't do anything, and I can't do anything to win my own salvation. I can keep my salvation once I have gained it through Christ Jesus, and I can do good works as God has told me to, to demonstrate not only my love for him, but my love for my fellow man and my desire to be pleasing to God. But I can't earn my way. So works of our own righteousness will not avail, although those things are necessary because they are good works and they are the things that God has told us we need to do. Okay, and what what kind of righteousness do, do you and I have when we are Christians? We don't have our own. We haven't earned it ourselves. But God has imparted His righteousness to us. It's called dakasune in the original Greek. And it's talked about in Romans chapter 5. And you can find that word in the original Greek there in chapter 5 where it says God has imparted his righteousness to us. He has made us what he wants us to be when we have what? Obeyed the gospel. He makes us his righteousness in Christ Jesus. We don't have our own. We have what God has given us. And there are works of God. There are things that God still does. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and verse 28. It says, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. That's verse 26. Keep on going. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give you, for him hath God the Father sealed. In other words, God has made him king. He's made him Lord. All these things. He, God has approved of him. Here we go. Verse 28. Then said he unto them, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God. Not hard to understand that. There are things that God does for us and works in our lives. Baptism is not a work of the flesh. It is a work of God because God is the one who cleanses us from all sin. God is the one who puts us in the Christ Jesus the scriptures say he has uh, translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That's God working for us and helping us, doing something we cannot do for ourselves. And that is a work of God. And of course, there are works of God's righteousness. There's a difference. Work of God's righteousness. Look in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 and verse 35. Acts chapter 10 and verse 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is acceptable with him. Not hard to understand that. Are you listening? But in every nation, that's every race of people, doesn't matter what language you speak. doesn't matter what color you are. Christ died for you. 
<clears throat> he that feareth him, the man who loves God and respects and honors him, and worketh righteousness, does the things approved of by God, is accepted with him. How wonderful is that? God's saying it doesn't matter who you are, how rich you are, where you're from. I love you. If you do the things I've asked you to do, I will accept you. What a wonderful God we have. Look in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 and um, verse 29. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 29 says, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Again, how simple that is. When we do what God has told us to do, when we live according to the word, 1 John talks about this in chapter 1, that we have fellowship one with another, in the light, in walking according to God's word. God's word is the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. When we're walking in Christ, in other words, we are proved of by him, we're blessed by him, we're forgiven, we're children of God, and we do what? We do his righteousness. We do what is the right thing to do. God has imparted his righteousness to us, and we are doing his righteousness. Obviously, we're born of him. Okay? Not hard to understand that. Look in, while we're in 1 John, go ahead and look at chapter 3 and verse 7. Little children, John says, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. When we're doing God's work, when we're doing the things that God has asked us to do, we are right. You see, there's a right way and a wrong way. To do things right, we've got to do things God's way. And when we're doing God's righteousness, He approves of us. And we're modeling ourselves after Him. Are we supposed to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Be, be ye holy, for the Lord your God am holy. Be ye imitators of Christ, Paul said, of me, even as I am of Christ. Model ourselves after what God wants us to do. What is the perfect paradigm of love, the perfect paradigm of what it means to be an obedient child of God? Jesus Christ. All we have to do is stop and think, what would Jesus do in this circumstance? What would Jesus do if he faced the dilemma that I find myself in, what would he choose to do? That is the way we need to think. Look while we're here in verse 10 in chapter 3. It says, In this the children of God are manifest. This is what makes us obvious to the world. We are choosing to do righteous things. We're choosing to do what God has asked us to do. We're not worried about what is this work? Am I working this? I'm doing that. No, I'm doing what God says to do. I am worshiping God. I am doing what I must do to glorify God in my life. Colossians tells me to do that. All that you do in word or deed do as unto the Lord. And all that we do must glorify God. Even Jesus Christ said that. He glorified the Father. Things he did, he gave acknowledgement to God for working through him to do those things. Even the raising of Lazarus, what did he do? He announced to those around him. He prayed to God the Father. There was a tradition in the uh, Jewish culture that if a man were to speak to God and God answered his prayer right there in front of everyone, obviously that man is of God and God blesses him. That's exactly what God, the Lord did. He said, I knowest thou, Father, that thou hearest me always, but for those that be here, I am speaking to you. And he prayed, 
and asked uh, and commanded Lazarus to come forth. He gave acknowledgement to God the Father. He gave glory to God. We must do the same thing. And beloved, when we are doing God's work, doing God's righteousness, we are demonstrating to the world that we are of God, number one, that we believe in God, number two, that we're children of God, number three, and we're telling the rest of the world by our actions they're wrong. We must do what God commands us to do. We're setting the standard. We're setting the example that the world needs to understand and the world needs to follow. How simple that is, how, how easy that is to understand. And come back to verse 10, it says, And the children of the devil, in other words, there's a contrast. The world is thinking one way. The world is following the devil. We are following the Lord. There's a startling contrast in what we're doing. And the world can see that difference. And it's necessary that the world see that difference so that they will know what is right and what is wrong. And in that case, in that sense, beloved, that's how we are judging the world. We don't sit down and judge like a judge on a bench. The world is constantly being judged by us, by what we do, how we live, the standards that we set. They automatically are seeing what's right and what's wrong, and they're making their own choice. That's not hard to understand. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that, do, that loveth not his brother. So there are righteous works of God, things that we need to do, there, there are works of merit that the world tries to do, but we, don't, we know we don't earn our, earn our way. And there's works of the law, and there's works of faith. Look, let's go ahead and look at that one. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Are you listening? Your works of what? Works of faith. You believe, therefore you are doing. Doing what? The good works that God has asked us to do. Our labor of love. We love our brethren. We love our, the lost. We love God. So we are doing what? Constantly in service mode. We are servants. Serving the Most High God. Serving our fellow man. Teaching them the gospel. Teaching them the truth. By our deeds. By our example. And indeed by our word if need be. To teach them the gospel. We're doing what God's asked us to do. Our works of faith. Let's look at uh, James chapter 2. James chapter 2 and starting with verse 14. James chapter 2 and verse 14. Faith basically is work. Without works is dead. It says, What doeth, doeth, uh, doeth it profit, my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? Obviously, no, because they have to go together. And listen to what he says. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, <clears throat> what doth it profit? What did you gain? What did they gain? That would be a, a work of righteousness. That would be a act of love to give them what they needed to love them enough to care for them in the manner which God would want us to <clears throat> that would be a work of righteousness okay even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone <clears throat> uh, yea a man say Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. And he's making a, 
a comment there to get their attention. Look, you can see what faith I have because of the way I live and what I'm doing. You're just talking. I'm demonstrating what I believe. Okay? Uh, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, and the devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O man, vain man, that faith without works is dead? Not hard to understand that, is it? Faith without works is dead. Faith and works go hand in hand, beloved. You can't just say, I'm saved by faith and leave it alone. You have to demonstrate that faith by your deeds, by what you say, by what you do. You have to demonstrate that to the world. And indeed, beloved, when you really get down to th thinking about it, as a child of God, as a believer in Jesus Christ, just as Paul says, I believe it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, even if he tried to remain quiet, he couldn't. He has to proclaim the, the, the word of God. As a child of God, how can you not do good works? How can you not demonstrate your faith? If you're truly a believer, you're going to demonstrate that love because you care. And the world needs to know that you care. Because you are the only Bible some will ever read. Let us always demonstrate our faith by our actions, by our words, by our deeds, indeed by our very, our very life. Just as Paul said, let us be a living sacrifice. I hope I've helped you here. I hope I've demonstrated some things to you and showed you what it means to uh, pertaining to works and to faith and what kind of works there are. Beloved, we indeed must do works, the works of God. Good works, as the Bible refers to them. Until next time, study God's Word. Bye-bye.